First, though, for this series of Missing Live, Rav Wilding has been travelling the length and the breadth of the UK. He's been searching for the heroes who find missing people when it is literally a case of life and death. His first stop is West Sussex. In September 2009, a vulnerable pensioner walked out of his home with his pet dog, Barney. Hours later, he was at the centre of a high-risk missing persons investigation. The day he went missing, I waved goodbye to him at one o'clock and went off to work, absolutely amazed when I got home at five o'clock and found he wasn't there. Police are searching for a missing man from Partridge Green who suffers from Alzheimer's. John Birchall, who is 70, was last seen at his home on Thursday morning. His family are very concerned for his safety and just want him home. John is described as five feet six inches tall. The police had already begun their investigation but the local community wanted to do more. Partridge Green is a small Sussex village where Christine and John Birchall are well known. So straight away, friends and neighbours offered their help to find John. I spent some time talking to other neighbours and said, let's commence an immediate search then. OK, let's have a quick look at the map, guys. Okay. Certain people came forward with compasses, maps, torches. He is not obviously dressed up that warm, as the temperature's dropping now. Let's get going then. Others were prepared to go out in their cars and start to do some searching immediately. And if I'm honest, I, I really thought we'd find John within that first period of time. John was diagnosed with dementia four years ago. It makes him forgetful and easily disorientated. So there was real concern for his safety, especially as it was now dark. He only just had a lightweight summer jacket on and I was getting concerned about the temperature dropping. So I think immediately my concerns would be for his health, that is he going to start to get cold and I think we need to find him pretty quickly. I knew John, I knew him well. He wasn't just a neighbour, he was a very close friend, we're very close to the family. Every turn that you look, you're just hoping to find him. With the police searching from the air and the local community looking on the ground, there were still no leads. It was time to call for reinforcements. So if you can go out, organise your teams and do a 300 metres from this initial planning point here. OK? Yep. They were the Sussex Search and Rescue Team, run by trained volunteers. Our major fear um, with the dementia sufferer is that they are going to get stuck or trapped somewhere where they will be difficult to find and that they will then succumb to the elements. The survival rates diminish greatly as time passes, so it's very important that you find them and you find them quickly. By this time it was about 10 o'clock in the evening. The Sussex Search and Rescue people set up an office upstairs. Push along that way, haven't we? Yeah. And they had like a control room in there. We need to be following that route up there. And they just sat there the whole night, um, just giving each other signals and mapping and grid lines and all sorts of different things to try and find him. There were so many comings and goings, and every phone call you think, oh no, they're just wanting another grid reference to start, or uh, and it was really hard. So you know, every literally you're on tender hooks every time the phone rings. Oh no, it's not happening. Just listening to the guy in the control room. Okay, mate. Cheers. Bye. For me, that was the most comforting thing of all. That I knew, and I could hear them. That they were really working hard. Team search in threes. That consists of a team leader, a first aider, and somebody doing comms and navigation. We put um, guys out on foot. We put guys out on mountain bike. Depending where the teams are searching, they may go out as runners and run to their search area really? and start searching from there. They will also get closer to their particular search sector by vehicle and then deploy from a vehicle. Hello, oh, that's not so They were in constant contact all night with mobile phones, telling them they was, that they'd searched one area and going on to the next area. And above us, you could hear the helicopter going over all the fields because there's an absolutely massive the warren the fields just across the road from us you know so it was just so difficult to find exactly where to look 
fears for John's safety were growing by the hour. He now faced being out all night. Morning came with a breakthrough. Finally, there'd been a sighting. But could it be John? Well, the first thing I heard someone was missing was when uh, a couple of people came around knocking on the door. I um, can't remember, it was quite late at night. I saw the guy late afternoon, early evening. At the time I saw him, I didn't realise he was missing. All I can remember is this chap out the back with a dog. Can I just sign 0836, please, seven minutes, I'm out. The helicopter unit had just changed shifts, bringing fresh eyes and ears to the search. Amy Wright and her team began their flight plan based around the potential sighting of John. So what information did you have in order to go and find a man in the middle of nowhere? I looked at the previous day's activity, which had been focused on the route that he used to walk the dog normally, and then some additional information came from a local pub that he'd been seen there later on that evening. So it kind of shifted the entire search area so I decided that based on his condition of Alzheimer's, they do have a tendency to walk in fairly straight lines and to keep going. So I decided to work further west from that last sighting, and that's how I, I decided where to look first. With John having been missing now all night, there really was no time to lose. So Amy, with her team of a pilot and paramedic, took to the air. see here that there's a, there's a load of fields and this is typically the sort of height you were when you were looking for John. You're still quite far up but you could see a figure if it was walking across. You get used to uh, the perspective and the scale of what you're going to see out the window and then the camera assists us. So you could actually be up in the air four minutes after getting a call, just four minutes. That yeah, that'd be from the phone call, getting the aircraft out and getting airborne. The helicopter had only been in the air for 20 minutes when they spotted a man in a white coat on the ground with a black dog. This is the actual footage of when the helicopter crew saw John for the first time. A local farmer also had his camera to hand and filmed the whole event. We landed nearby. Uh, he carried on walking, which could be a sign of the Alzheimer's that he hadn't acknowledged the fact that the aircraft was there. And as I approached him, I asked him his name. He said it was John, and I asked if that was Barney, and he said it was. And he was in fairly good spirits, um, a little bit tired, but still quite happy to be out walking. When I opened the door to the policeman, and he said, it's good news. So everybody, oh, crumbs. Really was quite upsetting them. And I was really glad that they'd found him. We got very attached and involved, which is something we try to avoid doing, but you just can't help it sometimes. And it was an enormous relief for us when John was found safely. Just the search and rescue team, how phenomenal. They were absolutely incredible. They really were. They gave up so much of their time. Really special people. Christine and Talia here. I mean, it brings tears to your eyes even mm, watching that watching film. That. Mm. What was it like that moment he walked back in the door after 24 hours? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, but he was so relaxed and calm. He just walked in the door and said, God, I can't even remember what he I did. Know, he said, well, I said to him, where have you been, Dad? He said, oh, I've just popped out with a dog. Yeah. I, <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours had gone. And he, he said, it's hanging on you in you. I mean, that's in, in a Cockney accent. It was really weird. Really? But um, we just gave him a hot drink, didn't we? A hot cup of tea with sugar in it. And yeah. Sally had bought chocolate to build his, you know, um, He's been out for 24 up. hours, hadn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, let's show you those pictures again from the helicopter, because I know you hadn't seen them before no, we today. Hadn't. Incredible. No, there they are amazing. over this countryside. Yeah. Um, and they spotted him. I know. We saw him walking. Yeah, you can see him walking in the field. I mean, it, I didn't know exactly where they found him, but... Um, and were you impressed by the work that they've done? Oh, good Lord. Absolutely amazing. and Absolutely amazing. Mm. Police and the search and rescue guys, they were out 
all the time. Okay, no, just did just so time. good. Um, ha you've had to change things a little bit now, haven't you? How is it? How is he doing? Um, he goes to day centre now, so I go to work and I'm able to still continue working, which I really love doing. Mm -hmm. um, he goes to the day centre. They absolutely love him there. He's such a sweetie. Um, and he's settled in particularly well. Yeah, he's so a charming man. I met him today. Uh, he, mm. We just can't leave him alone now, so we don't let him go into the position of getting lost anymore. No. Okay, well, thank you no. very much for coming thank to see us. Thank it's you. great that uh, John is back, safe and well. Fantastic work as well from Sussex Police helicopter team.